I saw this really cool thing um, on YouTube, and then I looked it up on Thingiverse, and they've, people have already done it. And uh, it's called stereographic projection, and where you can take something on a round surface and project it onto a flat surface. So this is a, just a bunch of squares. It looks like a globe at first, and then when you come down, boom, there's the uh, there's a bunch of squares. And so I wanted to figure out how they did this, and I, and I did. So I decided I would make something slightly different, and so I did a quick test. And uh, so here's this. So I just did some random shapes. And this projects, you know, basically whatever you want. So I'm going to show how to do this. I think I'm going to show first how they made this one, the original, and then I'll show you how I make this one. Okay. Now I'm going to be using Inventor. I'll probably next year do another tutorial using another program, SolidWorks, because we're converting to a different program. But um, I'll sh use Inventor today and show you how we do a uh, stereographic projection of an image. Okay? It's really cool. It's for my new nightlight project. I got this off a of Thingiverse, and uh, I'm gonna try to recreate it, okay? Using Inventor. So here we go. Um, so here's Inventor, and we're gonna do a new part. All right, once we're on a new part, we say 2D sketch. Now we're looking at the side of this right now, so we're going to um, draw on the side on the, or the front, either way it works. We're going to draw a circle right in the middle, and we're going to make this about eh, three inches. Okay, so three inches in diameter. Zoom out so you can find it. And... To make a, a sphere, what we do is we revolve it, and so we're going to draw a line from top to bottom, and then I'm going to use the scissors and trim off one side. Okay, so I finish that sketch, and then we revolve it. So revolve, and it already picks it for us because there's just that one shape. So I just click on the axis, and there we go. We have a, a sphere. Now I want to make that a um, a hollow sphere. So we're going to shell, and we can go. Um, point one two five. It's like an eighth of an inch. Okay, and we'll say okay. So we have an eighth of an inch thick sphere. Not like that. Okay. Now, we need to draw on the top and the bottom what we want, right? And to do that, we need to use a plane. So click on plane, then come over to the left side on origin, hit the plus sign, and then we'll do the one that cuts it right down the middle like this, XZ. But we don't want it there. We want to put it on the bottom or the top. So if you click up here, it'll put it up here. If you click down here, it'll put it down there. Um, but let's put one right at the very, um, let's see, we're projecting down. So one at the very, very bottom, which would be negative um, 1.5, right? All the way down there. Now going up, we want another plane up at the top. So we click this, and then we're going to drag it up. Now this one, you want to be right on the inside of it, not the outside, the inside where the shell is. And so this is, you know, 1.5 minus whatever you did for the shell. In this case, is 0.125, okay? And so that'll put that one right at that point, right on the inside of the shell. This is 
going to be where our light is projected out from, and this is where it's projected to. Um, when I showed you this one, it was setting on the table. So we're going to draw what we want it to look like if it's setting on the table and uh, it's projecting right there. Now, if we want to do like a night light, like I, I designed this one, I designed this one so it would project up to the ceiling, which is like five feet in the air. So I took this one way down, like five feet, okay? Or way up, depending on how you're looking at it. And then I drew how big I wanted the image to be when it was on the ceiling. Okay, so for this example, because everybody shows these projecting just while they're sitting flat on the table, we're gonna put it right touching the sphere. Okay, so what we wanna do is draw a, our point of where the light is coming from. So we will sketch on this one. Okay, now we can't see what we're doing, so we're gonna hit F7. That does slice graphics, so it puts it right there, right um, on the inside of the shell. We're gonna draw a circle. Okay, we're gonna dimension that circle to be 0 0.001. It's like a, we're pretending that light is super, super tiny. Okay, it's gonna be the tiniest hole you've ever seen. You can't even, you have to zoom way in to see it. Okay, and there it is. Anyway, so we're gonna finish that sketch. And now, so it should be, yeah, sketch two. Now we're going to do another sketch way down here in the bottom. And again, we can't see, so we hit F7 and it hides everything. You can always bring it back by hitting F7 again. All right, so we're gonna draw the square grid that it's going to project. So you draw what you want to have it do. We're just gonna start out with a rectangle and it looks like those rectangles are, um, we'll dimension it, 0.75 by 0.75, okay? Now the distance from the center to this, uh, they look like they're about a quarter of an inch. So we'll actually do um, eighth of an inch because it'll double on the other side. So 0.125 and then again from here down, 0.125. Oops, added another point accidentally. Okay, 0 0.125, 0 0.125. Boom, there's that one square. So instead of drawing all the other squares, we're going to use a rectangular pattern. And I'm just gonna draw on one fourth of the screen, actually you see me this way, um, all over here, and then we'll pattern it around for the rest of it. So geometry, so, so you see how it's highlighted right here? It means it wants to know what do you want to pattern. So we're gonna just draw a box around that and move on to the direction. And I don't like to go down, I wanna go up, so I'm gonna click this button, it's gonna go the opposite way. Direction two, we're gonna click this one. Again, it picked the wrong way, so I'm gonna go the other way. I want four of them. So I look at this, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so we're gonna go four and four. Four, four, there we go, boom. That should work out just fine. One, two, five is half of, okay, looks great. So I say, okay, and it draws all of them for me. So it saves a lot of work right there. We finish the sketch, and now we're ready to um, use the loft tool, okay? So the loft tool, um, we're going to first pick the sketch that we want, and then we're gonna start right here on the bottom and click to add, and then choose the other sketch, which is sketch two. Boom. Now that wants to make a solid, so we're going to change this to cut. What that will do is cut down through the sphere into that tiny little point. So we say okay, 
and voila, there it is. I cut down in. Now the sketch disappeared. So to bring it back, I'm going to hit the plus sign on the loft command over here and um, right click and turn on visibility for both of these sketches. So they're, they're back to what we want because it kind of hides them in there. So you open up loft and then reactivate those two sketches so we can continue using them over and over again. And so we just keep doing that same thing. You click on loft, you click on the sketch, click to add, click on the other sketch, make sure it says cut. Oh, first you say click to add, sorry. Then click on the, let me start over. Loft, you have to do it in the right order. And this proves it because I got in trouble there. Click on what you want, click to add, click the other sketch, make it cut. Say, okay, let's do it again. Loft, click the sketch, click the part of the sketch you want, click to add, click the other sketch, and then say cut. Say, okay, can change that order a little bit. So we could go loft, click the sketch, click what we want, click to add. And before, as you're on your way down, you can hit the cut and then click on sketch two. That still works in that order as well. So we say, okay, so far, so good. We're looking, looking pretty nice. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep going. I'll probably speed this up in the video. So just watch and learn. Looking very close to the original. Uh, what I'm going to do is hide all that mess right there. I'm going to turn them back off. And I can even click on the work plane. You can right click and hit visibility right there as well. All right, so now that I can see everything and you can see what I'm doing, we're going to do a circular pattern, okay? So you can see how, you can see a picture there whenever you mouse over something, kind of uh, you draw it once and then say, rotate it around and copy it. You can also do the rectangular pattern here, but that wouldn't have worked um, until we had a whole fourth of it done. Um, so, cause it would have moved it in a weird way, uh, circular pattern. And first it asks for the features. So we're going to use loft one all the way down to loft 16. So if you hold down shift, boom, selected them all. So they're all blue right there. And then we do the rotation axis, which if you mouse over these axes, find the one that goes, you know, all the way up through the sphere right there. There's the one that does it. And it's going to give you a preview. Now it looks weird because it defaults to six. Um, everybody likes six. So they put six in as the default. We're going to change that to four. Now it looks more like what we want. So once you see the pattern that you want, you say, okay. And it rotates it around might take some time because there's so many of them thinking about it. Okay. And there it is. So first we still have to do the, the bottom there. Okay. So let's bring back the work plane visibility. Let's do another sketch on there. And I want to see this as well. Visibility. Whoa, two way. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do a rectangle. And I'm going to change it to the two point center rectangle. I'm going to click in the very center and come out. Let's see what looks good. I'm just guessing. Boom. I like that. Now I'm going to do another one. Boom. 
Okay, now let's slap in some dimensions. Eh, no, we'll just leave it. We'll be fine. Um, one thing that I noticed, though. Uh, actually, hold on. We're going to we're gonna make this one a lot bigger. Oh, they're connected. All right, we'll go like that. One thing that I noticed is that you cannot do a hole. It has to be an it has to be an enclosed shape without another shape inside of it. So I cannot just loft this square and not this square with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from here to here, and then from here down to here, and that creates two shapes, one up here and one down here. So we're going to finish that, and we're going to do this in two steps. All right, so we're going to loft again. And we're going to click that and we're notice how just that highlighted right there. And then we're going to click to add again, do sketch to make sure it's a cut. What that will do is slice off the bottom there. So we're going to say, okay, see what that looks like. That looks exactly like the other one. Look at that. So far, so good. We can actually do the uh, circular pattern. Do that um, axis here. We're only going to do two of them. Oh, come on, feature loft. Two of them, say OK. Did it do it? Okay, yeah, I did it. Um, you can either loft the other half for that or do the, the uh, circular pattern. Either way works. You still have this disc down here, but uh, it's now, you know, far enough down that we can just get rid of it by uh, drawing on the either the X, Y, or the Y, Z. Either one will work. So I'll just draw there and just make a two point rectangle. We'll just draw around that, finish the sketch and extrude, but we're gonna say cut right here. And we're gonna say go both ways, the distance, you can just say all and it'll just get rid of everything. Or you can just extend the arrows till everything's gone, whatever works, okay? Say, okay, voila, I just drew exactly what I had, okay? Um, kinda cool when you can figure out how to do stuff like that. Anyway, um, so, Instead of squares, you can draw whatever you want. You can have all sorts of cool things. Let me show you. Okay, here's a cool one. It actually shows Einstein's face. And if you look at it, it's just a bunch of dots on here. Okay. Um, and they supposedly have some sort of customizer, but it didn't work. So I figured out how to do it on my own. And um, voila. Okay, if I go back some more, you can see there's all sorts of patterns that people have done. Okay, I don't know if they used Inventor or not, but uh, now you know how to do this with Inventor or with other programs that have a loft capability. Okay, once you understand the concept, um, it works really well. This one right here, what I did was I did a pyramid and shelled it and then made lofts coming down and drew a circle right where I wanted my light to be because I wanted to, uh, with this one, I have to kind of position the light perfectly and it's hard to get it just right. This one, when I glue the light right in that hole, it makes it so it's perfect every time, okay? So I, I took their idea and I 
uh, made it better, I think. But I wanted to see or show that I can do anything they can do. All right. And it's pretty cool. So sky's the limit. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we're starting to get into stuff. What I think would be really cool would be to do actually the, the earth. So when it's, so it looks like, um, you know, all the continents on here. And then when you project it, it's a flat map. So you go from a round globe to a, a flat map, which would be kind of, it, it wouldn't look right on here, but it would be kind of cool to see um, the world, you know, projected up in that manner. So I'll probably work on that next. Anyway, all right. Hopefully you learned a lot and uh, you enjoyed it.